Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie, and today we're going to talk about demystifying Linux C groups. So the first question you might have is, what is a Linux C group? Well, the term C group is short for the words control group, and they provide a means of isolating Linux processes from each other, which allows us to run servers that are more densely packed with either virtual machines or containers, and also allows us to, ha to have better containerization technologies than what we had before. And they also allow us to set resource usage limits for either users or for system processes. And for cloud providers, they provide a way to keep track of each user's resource usage. And uh, this would be for billing purposes. So the, uh, uh, the cloud provider would know how much to bill each one of the customers. And they also allow a user to pin a process to a specific CPU core or set of CPU cores. And uh, you know, by default, uh, if you ever look at a top display uh, as uh, certain processors are going, you might see that they move around, you know, from one CPU core to another. And uh, by pinning them to a specific core or set of CPU cores, uh, you might be able to improve your performance just a bit. Okay, now Linux C groups can also do several other things for you, but uh, a lot of those are things that a normal Linux administrator might never need to do. So we're just going to keep it more generalized today. And uh, there's other things that, that C groups can do for you. You know, they would be good for you know, like uh, more specialized Linux administrators. But for right now, we're just going to keep things kind of generalized just to try to keep things simple. So then why do we need to demystify C groups? They sound kind of simple, right? But here's the thing. If you've ever tried to look up information about C groups, if you've ever needed to try to use C groups and you need information about them, uh, most of the information you find is either out of date, very confusing, or it's incomplete. So if you've ever tried to find this information, you've likely been very, very frustrated. Okay? And uh, to make things worse, right? If, if you go out and look at blog posts or tutorials on the internet or what have you, and uh, you, you you find some sort of a tutorial about C groups, uh, a lot of times they don't put timestamps on them, and uh, so that way you have no idea of how old that blog post is, and uh, uh, a lot of times they're showing you information about about uh, older versions or older information, uh, older uh, implementations of C groups, and uh, uh, it's stuff that won't do you any good, right? And then by the confusing part, I mean a lot of them try to go into all the deep details about uh, about the uh, the uh, uh, architecture and uh, the structure of C groups and uh, about all the theory about how they work and all that. And it, it's stuff that you might not need to know. I mean, if you're, well, if, if, if you're a software engineer, yeah, you would need to know all that. But uh, for just a, a normal Linux administrator, you might not need to know all that, okay? So, uh, and, and uh, it's like, kind of like if you go on YouTube, right? And uh, well, you are on YouTube. <laughs> You're watching it here, but anyway. Uh, so if you if you go out on, on the YouTube homepage and you search for C groups, you're going to get a lot of videos, but which are hour long presentations uh, about all this stuff that you just don't need to know. Now, on the other hand, a lot of stuff uh, that you find might be incomplete. It won't give you the complete picture of how to use the C groups. So anyway, let's go ahead and begin this demystification process with a bit of history. C Groups version 1 was invented by a pair of Google engineers in 2006. And the first enterprise grade Linux distro to use C Groups technology, and this was version 1, was Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. And uh, uh, 
Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 ran a hybrid upstart SysV init system instead of System D. And I'll explain why that's important in just a moment. But uh, C groups with that setup were an option. They were not set up by default. So if you wanted to, to create C groups for whatever reason on uh, Red Hat Enterprise 6, then uh, you had to jump through some hoops. You, you had to jump through some hoops first to actually create the C groups and then to set whatever parameters for uh, resource usage or uh, whatever else you wanted to do uh, in the C groups configuration files. Now, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 was the first enterprise grade Linux distro to use the System D init system. Now, the reason this is important is because all System D type Linux distros have all system processes running in their own C groups by default. Now, important to understand too, the C group code base is not actually part of System D. They're two separate components in the Linux kernel, but the C groups are tightly integrated into the system D ecosystem. C groups version one was used on all Red Hat 7 and 8 type distros, and of course that includes all the Red Hat clones, and uh, also on Debian through Debian 10, and Ubuntu through version 20.4 LTS. And uh, yeah, they might have been used on some of the non-LTS versions after that, but I generally ignore them. <laughs> uh, I, I've, I've had too many bad experiences with non-LTS versions of Ubuntu, all right? But anyway, uh, for the LTS, the uh, version 1 was used up through version 20.04. Next, we have C group version 2. And yes, that's not a typo. We have C groups version 1 and C group version 2. I have no idea why. That's just the way they did it. But anyway, uh, version 2 was created in 2013 by engineers at Facebook. And C groups version 1 was good. It worked well. But it had some inefficiencies in it. It just didn't run as efficiently as it could have, right? Uh, just due to its design. Now, version 2 corrects the inefficiencies of version 1 and is now the, uh, the standard uh, default C group version on all current versions of the system D type Linux distros. And uh, I want to emphasize again, just to be clear, the C group code base is not part of the system D code base. You can implement C groups on non system D distros, uh, such as Alpine Linux, for example. And uh, but they're not generally implemented by default. Now, the creators of System D made C groups an integral part of the System D ecosystem. So, on these System D distros, each system process runs in its own C group. And this helps keep the processes isolated from each other, which helps to improve the operation of containerization technologies such as Docker or Podman. And also, Another benefit of this tight integration with System D is that you can use simple system CTL commands to easily set resource limits for either users or for system services. Now, as a normal Linux administrator, you don't need to think too much about the process isolation aspect because that's handled for you automatically in the background. And again, a lot of tutorials you're going to find on YouTube or wherever else are going to go into all the nitty gritty details of all the technologies that uh, make this process isolation possible. As a normal Linux administrator, maybe you don't really care about that, okay? So, uh, we're just going to look now at what you need to know for resource management. All right, so with C groups, you have what we call resource controllers. And you see the big long list of all this resource controllers we have here. And again, uh, other Linux tutorials are going to go through each and every one of these and try to explain all the nitty gritty details about them. But guess what? For all practical purposes, 
as a normal Linux administrator, these are really the only ones you need to worry about. So uh, uh, you can look at the names of them there. You can probably kind of figure out from the names of them what they are, but CPU set, uh, that resource controller, is uh, what allows us to pin processes to certain CPU cores or just certain CPUs. Now, uh, that one is uh, it's, it's going to be useful for C group version 2, but you're not really going to be using it for C groups version 1. But for version 2, yeah. Uh, and then we have this, uh, the CPU controller, which allows us to set resource uh, limits for the CPU. So uh, we have a user who's hogging up that CPU with some sort of a weird process. Uh, you can you can go in there and set a a CPU resource limit for that user. So you can say, uh, hey uh, uh, user, uh, we're going to let you we're going to let you use like 10% of the of the CPU cycles here and no more than that, okay, <laughs> or something like that, whatever, whatever you want to allow that user to use. And uh, same thing there, uh, block IO, uh, that allows you to set limits on the, uh, on the input-output bandwidth that a user can use. And, uh, and I'm saying user, I mean, you can do the same thing for system processes, okay, uh, system services. But uh, anyway, uh, so uh, uh, let's say instead of allowing uh, a person to ha to to just transfer files, you know, from one place to another at full speed, uh, you you can put a limit on the amount of uh, bandwidth that that user is using. That way, you know, other users can have some bandwidth, and also for memory. And uh, so you can. Uh, let's say that you only want a particular user or particular service to use like uh, maybe 10 gigabytes of memory. Well, you can set that limit very, very easily. And then uh, down the pot, at the bottom there, I have CPU account. And uh, I put it at the bottom because uh, the, only, the only time you're going to really worry about that one is if you're working for a, a cloud uh, service provider and you need to keep account of uh, everybody's resource usage for billing purposes. Now, uh, the uh, uh, again, other tutorials are going to, uh, if, if they're out of date and they're old, they're going to have you jumping through all kinds of hoops to, uh, to uh, uh, set these limits. But in reality, on a system D type distro, this is the type of thing that you would be doing to set a limit. And in this case here, we are setting a memory max limit for user 1001. Okay, so and the way you do it there, you don't you don't use the uh, user's username, you just use the user's ID number. Uh, but anyway, so you you do sudo system ctl set property uh, user dash 1001 dot slice and then memory max equals 1G. So we are allowing this user to use up to one gigabyte of memory. And uh, that way all the other users on the system will be able to uh, you know, have their memory, right? Uh, and then uh, you can also set CPU uh, limits or I/O bandwidth uh, limits for either users or system services in the same way, and then for system services, you can also set the resource limits by making a simple edit to the services unit file, and that's something we can look at later. Okay, but anyway, uh, that's really pretty much it for the introduction to Linux C groups. And again, this is just a very, very short video because I just wanted to clear up some of the mystery about them and to, uh, to let you know what you really need to know as a normal Linux administrator. Now, in future videos, we can take a look at a uh, uh, little bit more about the, the, the C group structure and how to actually use C groups. And uh, we'll, we'll give some more tutorials about all that then, okay? But in the meantime, 
If you want to know more about C groups and more about how to use them, how to implement them, and even a little bit more about the theory about them, maybe, then I would recommend that you check out my book, Linux Service Management Made Easy with System D. And uh, it's got uh, lots of hands on tutorials. Uh, everything is explained in a nice, clear manner. I try not to overload you with information that you don't need and uh, just give you the good practical information that can help you out. And uh, it's and of course, it's not just for C groups. I mean, the book is not just for C groups. It's also for System D in general. This is the only book on the market that does a thorough uh, examination, a thorough explanation of the entire System D ecosystem. And of course, when you get to the C groups chapter, I cover both C groups version one. So if you're using uh, older Linux distros, you're covered there. And also uh, cover C group version two. So you're covered for the newer Linux distros as well. Okay. And uh, one of the nice things about System D is that it's pretty much universally implemented across all uh, Linux distros. So it doesn't really matter what Linux distro you're using. The uh, information in this book is going to cover uh, that Linux distro as long as it's one that's using System D, of course. Okay, so anyway, uh, be sure to check it out. The uh, purchase links for the book are in the video description below, and also be sure to uh, like the video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and also free feel free to share the video out with all your friends. Okay, <laughs> but uh, anyway. Uh, in future videos, as I said, we'll look at uh, C groups a little bit more in depth and uh, see what see what we can do with them. All right. So in the meantime, uh, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.